Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the reliability part of bivariate econometric modeling. In the last class, we have discussed the, the need of reliability and the structure of reliability for the bivariate estimated econometric model. So, now uh, we like to highlight this same issue again here, because some of the things we have not discussed last class. So, the thing is for two uh, for two variables y and x. So, our fitted model is like this y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Okay. So, now the essential point is here we have two specific objectives. The first objective is to know the significance of the parameters and second objective is to know the overall fitness of the models. Okay. So, in this particular, so far as the reliability is concerned, so we have two specific objectives. So, first objective is to know the significance, significance of parameters okay, and that is with respect to alpha head and beta heads okay. and second the significance of the significance of overall fitness of overall fitness of the model okay overall fitness of the model so we have two specific objectives so far as the reliability is concerned so first objective is to know the significance of the parameters that is the weightage of uh, you know each parameters uh, when uh, when we uh, fit the uh, you know regression equations with respect to x and y and obviously the impact can be negative or the impact can be positive okay which is judged through the slope of the you know x coefficient x coefficient or x variables uh, uh, this uh, which we have to judge through so slope of the x variable that is nothing but beta coefficient and alpha coefficient is just to know the significance of the you know supporting uh, component uh, uh, factors so now uh, in you know just to, to put it in a straight line equation and this is you know intercept and this is what we call it a slope so now we like to know whether this you know intercept or the supporting component is a significant one for influencing y and whether x component is a significant one again for influencing y so now to know this one so we have standard procedures so that part uh, the discussion of this part particularly is known as the reliability of this estimated model. So, before we first we track this first objective that is the significance of the parameters. So, the significance of parameter is that so we have to represent the estimated models uh, in a typical tabular form so that we can understand the exact uh, structure of the reliability. So, now when we have estimated models we had a y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. So, then the standard table we have to design is here. So, we have estimated estimated parameters okay, parameters then second the estimated values okay, then third uh, third column represents variance variance of estimated values then standard error then t statistics then you know probability okay probability level of significance these are the structure of this particular you know significance of the parameters that means with respect to the first objective so what are the estimated parameters for this particular uh, you know bivariate setup the estimated parameters first parameter is uh, related to alpha head and second parameter is beta heads okay so this is what the uh, means now this uh, this table is all together complete ones okay so this is what we have to design this entire tables all right 
So, now, so this particular structures, so what is estimated value? Alpha head we will get it, uh, you know, this is nothing but y bar minus beta head x bar and beta head is equal to summation x y y summation x square. So, wh which we have discussed long back. So, now variance of uh, variance of estimated alpha that is nothing but variance of alpha head and this is nothing but variance of beta head. Then standard error of beta that is nothing but variance of alpha head and this is stand, uh, square root of var uh, variance of beta heads. Okay. So, this is how the standard error will be designed. So, t, t statistic for this is t alpha head and this is t beta heads and we like to know what is the significance levels. Okay. So, now th this model is you know theoretically is okay, but uh, you know uh, technically or practically so far as the significance of the parameter is concerned. So, we have to we have to evaluate in a proper sequence and that has to be compared with the tabulated value which we have discussed details in the last class. So, now what is what is all about this variance of alpha head? So, basically the variance of alpha head is derived and there are uh, you know technical procedure how you have to get the variance of alpha head, but in the meantime variance of alpha head is nothing but sigma square u into summation x squares divided by n summation x squares. Okay. So, here this this is you know this this particular item is a capital X and this particular X is a small x. So, this is nothing but deviation format this is what we can represent in x minus x bars all right. So, now so all together there are four items. So, sigma sigma square u summation uh, capital X square then n into summation small x square. Okay. So, this is nothing but variance of uh, you know variance of x. And so, oh, oh, the question is what is sigma square here? So, sigma square is uh, sigma square u is called as a error variance here. So, this is otherwise called as a error variance. Okay, error variance. The way we are uh, calculating the variance of a particular variable, say x or particular variable y. So, we we have to also calculate the variance of you can say u o or e because uh, in a bivariate setup we start with the two variables y and x, but ultimately we uh, with the help of you know estimated model we get to know the uh, 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 or we have to create another variable called as a u or otherwise called as a error term. So, now all together when we have a fitted models then the entire system consists of you know four important uh, columns. So, first column is related to y column. So, it gives the information about y structure and we can get to know what is the variation of y or you can say standard deviation of y or mean of y. So, these are the objective statistic we have to draw from the y column. Similarly, in the x column, so we have series of x information corresponding to all o y component. So, we can also get to know the entire descriptive statistics of x variable. So, now next to x then we we can we start with a variable called y head, y head is nothing but alpha head plus beta head x. So, now with the help of alpha head value and beta head value and with the help of x information then we can create the y head column. So, y head column also we can get this uh, descriptive statistic of o, o, o y head because y head altogether here another variable which is the uh, design through the help of y and x and the estimated parameters alpha head and beta head. So, now uh, uh, with respect to y head and y we have to create another columns called as a error, co error column. So, that is represented as a u columns or you can say e column. So, now corresponding to every figure of y head and y. So, we have to find out the error component. For instance, u 1 is equal to y 1 minus y 1 head. Similarly, e 2 equal to y 2 minus y 2 head. So, the difference bec uh, between the estimated uh, estimated o o o y and you know actual y. So, this will give the error representation. So, now once you have error uh, error, error series uh, starting from u 1 to e 1 uh, e n provided uh, the system is the nth observation. Then you have to calculate the error variance. So, this error variance you know it is called as a sigma square u. So, sigma square u uh, uh, sometimes you know this error variance we will represent here summation e square by n minus 2. Okay. Uh, this summation uh, sigma square u equal to uh, uh, summation e square by n minus 2. Here uh, you know basically uh, this particular summation e square by n minus uh, 2 we can put it in a other way summation e square by n minus k. Actually, k is, k is the number of variables in this particular systems or number of parameters in this particular systems. So, now since this uh, this particular model is a bivariate one, so obviously there are two variables and there are two param uh, 
two parameters uh, that is alpha parameters and beta parameters. So, as a result k is represented as a here 2. So, there, uh, there is no point to write summation is square by n minus k, because it is already known to us that uh, k represents the total number of variables in the system that is you can say y and x or number of parameter in the systems that is alpha head and beta head. So, now, uh, uh, but the when there is a you know multivariate system then this particular terms can be represented as a summation is square by n minus k. For instance, if you have a trivariate models then obviously, summation is square by n minus 3, because there are 3 variables in the uh, system. Similarly, we have to extend one after another then obviously, the n minus k component will start you can say expanding. So, now uh, sigma square e equal to summation e square by n minus 2, where summation e square is equal to summation y hat squares uh, plus uh, summation y hat square, uh, uh, okay, no, this is summation e y square minus summation y hat squares. So, that means, uh, in other words it is nothing but summation y square minus summation y hat square. Let me explain how it is happened here. So, this is this is you know usually derived uh, in a technical procedures. So, the details uh, you know calculating procedure of this particular terms we can analyze here. Okay. So, now this particular system this particular system say let us say we, we have a system say y equal to y head plus uh, e. Okay. So, this is how we start the process. So, what we will do let us we call it equation number 1. Then we we uh, you can say subtract y bar on both the sides. Okay, so this is nothing but y head minus uh, y bar so plus e. Okay, so now you you see here. So the actual uh, the actual representation is uh, like this. So now this is what we call it the a uh, x series and this is what we will call it y series. Okay, so then we have a estimated uh, you know uh, corresponding to o, o y. So we can get the you can say uh, 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 we can get the uh, y uh, you know y bar and corresponding to x we have to get the x bar. So, this is what we call is a mean of y and this is called as a mean of x. So, now uh, with respect to y and x information our objective is to get the estimated line that is called as a best fitted line. So, now uh, let us assume that this best fitted line can be represented like this. So, this is y head which is equal to alpha head plus beta head x okay uh, beta head x okay so now uh, this particular uh, point is very relevant because in this particular point where y head uh, y head bar or exactly equal to y bars okay so this is how we are uh, representing here that means uh, 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 this entire representation we can write it here like this y minus y bar is equal to y head minus y head bars plus e okay because y y bar and y head bar is equal at that point of uh, you know equilibrium so it is not a issue so what we have to do instead of writing this one so we call it this is small y okay in deviation format and this is what we will call it y head in a deviation format and this is e this is in also is as usual uh, okay error terms so now uh, uh, this is what we have derived from here okay so now put it in a proper way so it is y equal to y head plus e okay so now what we have to do so this is original equation we have y minus y equal to y head plus e this y and this y head is in a capital format and this y and this y head is yes, you know deviation format so there is a huge difference between this deviation and actual so now uh, we have transferred the actual to deviation format so for this simplicity is concerned so now what we have to do we have to apply summation, uh, we first apply square in both the sides and then you have to, we have to apply the summation to uh, to get the entire structures. So, now what we have to do, if we do that then the entire structure becomes summation y square equal to summation y head plus e whole square. So, obviously, i equal to 1 to n here, this is i equal to 1 to n because uh, i represents the sample units, it will start from 1 to n. Okay. Uh, so, because we are in the process of cross sectional modeling uh, and uh, our sample unit uh, uh, represent here i. Okay. So, now, uh, so obviously, i equal to 1 to up to n. All right. So, now, what you have to do? So, this 
uh, this particular component y head y a, a head bar. So, this is what we we can write in the format like this y head squares i equal to 1 to n plus summation e squares uh, uh, i equal to 1 okay, plus 2 summation uh, y head into e. Okay, so, this if we, if we expand this particular uh, you know right hand side of this equation, then we will get summation y square equal to summation y head square plus summation e square plus 2 summation y head into e, but this particular term is exactly equal to 0. Okay, this particular term is exactly equal to 0. So, now the question is how it becomes 0. So, let, let me explain here. So, okay. so, the structure is here. So, our point is here to prove that summation y head e equal to 0. Okay. So, first of all what is y head? y head is equal to some y head minus y head bar. Okay. So, this is nothing but y head minus y bars. All right. So, now if we simplify then it is nothing but alpha head uh, plus beta head x minus alpha head minus beta head x bar. Okay. Again, if we simplify, then it is nothing but alpha alpha uh, alpha head alpha head cancel. So, beta head into x minus x bar. So, which is equal to beta head into small x that is what we call it deviation that means this particular item is a small x. Okay. So, this is one part of the problem then E equal to y minus y head. Okay. So, that means uh, and that means e equal to y minus y head which is nothing but y minus beta head x okay beta head x i okay so now this is y e and this is y head so now we have to integrate so now summation y head e is equal to um, summation because uh, this is summation here so this beta head x uh, into y minus beta head x okay so obviously this is x i and this is x i this is y i so like this okay so uh, of course i equal to 1 to n and this side i equal to also 1 to n okay uh, uh, um, the actually the term is 2 into summation y head into e but if we prove that summation y head equal to 0 then obviously 2 into 0 equal to 0 so now what we have to do uh, so here just we take beta head common so then summation uh, x i y i okay minus uh, minus beta head uh, beta head is common here so beta head summation x squares okay summation x squares beta head summation x squares uh, okay and then uh, this beta head is you can say we have taken a common beta head so then it is nothing but beta head into summation x i y i minus what is beta head? Beta head is nothing but summation x i y i divided by summation x square. Okay, so, we have again summation x square. So, this summation x square, this summation x square cancel. So, that means equal to beta head into summation x i y i minus summation x i y i. Okay, so, uh, uh, summation x i y i. So, this and this is cancel. So, that means it is nothing but beta head into 0 which is nothing but equal to 0 all right so now so that means the entire structure is like this so beta head uh, 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 beta head equal to summation x y x i y i we are just expanding the beta head value here so obviously summation x square summation x square cancel so the left uh, left out term is summation x i y i so obviously summation x i y i is here so this is summation x i y i a, a, a. So, uh, uh, that means uh, it is equal to 0. So, now we, uh, we have proved that summation y head a, a equal to 0. So, now you come to, come to this stage here. So, summation that means summation y square summation y square is equal to summation y head square plus summation e squares. Okay. So, now we will start our process here. So, what is exactly this particular funda? So, this particular funda is like this. So, we start with you can say y equal to y head plus e then uh, you know we transfer into o y equal to y head plus e then uh, after you know uh, doing some you know process. So, we get to uh, we have received summation y square equal to 
summation y hat square plus summation e square. Okay, so, this is i equal to 1 to n and this is i equal to 1 to n and this is also i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, this is how the entire structure is all about. So, that means, our point is here to justify the significance of the alpha parameter and beta parameters and to, to judge this particular uh, task. So, we need to have variance of alpha head and to have variance of alpha head and to have variance of beta head, we need to integrate with again with the uh, error variance, because this particular variance of alpha head depends upon the variance of uh, error variance and if, if, uh, again for you can say a uh, variance of beta head, we need also error variance. So, we like to know what is the exact component of error variance. So, expanding by this process, so we are in the pro we are in the stage that summation y square equal to summation y head square plus summation e square. This particular term is called as a TSS and this particular term is called as a, a ESS and this particular term is called as a RSS. Okay, this particular term is called as a RSS. So, what is exactly uh, this particular term? So, that means this is called as a total sum square, this is explained sum square and this is called as a residual sum square. So, that means this is what we call is a total sum squares, total to sum squares, then this is explained sum squares, explained sum squares and this particular term is called as a, this particular term is called as a, a residual, a residual sum squares, okay, sum square. <coughs> it is otherwise known as unexplained unexplained sum squares unexplained sum squares okay this is otherwise called as a unexplained sum square this is otherwise called as a unexplained unexplained sum squares all right this is otherwise called as a unexplained sum squares so now what is exactly uh, this particular term so this is nothing but summation y minus y bar whole squares i equal to 1 to n and this particular term is nothing but y head squares this is nothing but summation y head minus y bar whole squares i equal to 1 to n then this is nothing but uh, summation you can say y i minus y head whole square i equal to 1 to n in fact the entire process we started from here only because our entire model is nothing but e equal to y minus y head and uh, the way we are minimizing the error sum we have received the alpha head component and beta head component so now uh, to justify the significance of this particular parameter alpha head and the parameter beta head we again come down this particular process so now uh, we have to exp uh, explain how this but means there is a lots of interesting facts behind this particular uh, 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 structure. So, let us see how is this particular structures all right. So, now we have the component summation y square equal to summation y head square plus summation e square. So, that means what we can conclude total sum square is equal to explained sum squares plus residual sum squares all right so we are now in a position to say that total sum square is equal to explained sum squares and residual sum squares uh, and the way i have highlighted earlier that uh, you know when you have y series and we have x series that is our you can say uh, you know beginning so, we have y information and we have x information and through the process we have received the error error component that is how we you can say uh, it is all about you can say statistics or econometrics. So, that means we like to verify that uh, whether x is the totally influencing the y component or x is the partly influencing y okay. and so, uh, some of the other part can be explained in other way. For instance, if x is not 100 percent influencing y, then obviously, there is some point of lacking. So, that lacking part we have to discuss and that is nothing but it is called as a residual. So, that means, when we have y series, 
we like to know what is the total sum square that is nothing but sum of y i minus y bar the deviation and its uh, 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 squares. Uh, that means, the uh, variation from all these points to the you can say from the arithmetic mean. So, now total sum square is equal to explained sum square that is nothing but summation y head minus y head bar squares and rest is summation e squares that is residual sum squares. So, now uh, put it in technically. So, what I will do let us let us uh, uh, you know assume that this is equation number 1. So, what I will do I will divide summation y square both the sides. Okay. So, dividing dividing summation y square on both the sides on both the sides on both the sides of equation 1 then what we have. So, you see here so summation y square divided by summation y square is equal to summation y hat square by summation y square plus plus summation e square by summation y square all right. So, now this particular term is exactly equal to exactly equal to 1 ok. This is equal to 1 ok. So, now we uh, this is one component and this is another component. So, that means 1 equal to summation y hat square by summation y square plus summation e square by summation y square all right. So, this is how o, o means we are in a position to draw like this. So, obviously, i equal to 1 to n here i equal to 1 to n here. So, this is i equal to 1 up to o n here all right. So, now we have two parts. So, we call it this is part a and this is we call it a part b ok. Let, uh, let us first expand what is this part a component. So, part a component is like this summation y head square by summation y squares ok. What is y head exactly? So, y head is nothing but summation small beta uh, means beta head and small x ok. This is whole square uh, i equal to 1 to n divided by summation y square obviously, i equal to 1 to n all right. So, now what is beta uh, that means uh, uh, what the, uh, if we simplify further then it is nothing but beta head square uh, then summation x square divided by summation y squares all right. So, now what is beta head? So, beta head actually beta head is equal to summation x y by summation uh, x square ok beta head by uh, beta head equal to summation x i by summation x square ok. So, now you see here if you simplify further then uh, what we can do. So, uh, summation uh, put it here. So, summation ok I will I'll, I'll write it here again. So, summation y head square by summation y square is equal to uh, is equal to uh, su summation x y whole square uh, divided by summation x square whole square into summation uh, x square ok divided by summation y square ok. This is what o y hat square by summation y square. So, now you see here this is summation x square and this is summation x, x square to the power again 2. So, this is how it is cancelled. So, that means, it is nothing but summation x y whole square by summation x square into summation y square all right. This is the left out term from this you know component. So, that means, uh, this is what we have received from the part a. So, part a if we will expand this part a that is the variance of explained uh, uh, ratio between explained sum square to total sum squares. So, when uh, means the exact term is a summation y square equal to summation y hat square plus summation e square that means, the total sum square equal to explained sum square plus residual sum square. So, now what we have done? So, we divide the total sum square both the side. So, then the uh, left side of this problem is equal to 1. So, then right part of the first part is e the explained sum square divided by total sum square. This is how it is called as a you know ratio between the explained sum square to total sum square, then the ratio between residual sum square to total sum square. So, now we like to know uh, if we have a component explained sum square to total sum square what is that for uh, issue and if you know uh, the ratio component is a 
residual sum square divided by total sum square what is that component. So, the, uh, then we have to now uh, uh, you know interpret accordingly. So, now uh, uh, by this process we are in the process uh, we, uh, we are uh, you know coming to a position that summation y hat square by summation a y square that is nothing but E s s by T s s is nothing but summation x y square by summation x square into summation y square. This is what we call it is just like r squares. Okay. This is what we call it a r square that is what is r square? r square is nothing but square of square of correlation coefficient. Okay. This is what is called as a correlation coefficient. You see uh, what is correlation? Then correlation is simply nothing but covariance of x y divided by sigma x into sigma y. Okay. If we will simplify further then it is nothing but summation x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n all divided by summation x square by n square root then summation y square by n square root. Okay. So, this n this n this n cancel all right. So, now um, if a, 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 a this is r component this particular component is nothing but summation x y okay. this is summation x y divided by summation x square into summation y squares all right. So, now if we will make it square then obviously r square equal to summation x y whole square divided by summation x square into summation y square. Okay. So, what we have received from here only. So, that means this particular ratio explained sum square to total sum square is a, a nothing but the r square component the what that means what is r, r square here? r square represent the square of correlation coefficient, but you know uh, this particular component is very much true when we are in the bivariate process, but when there is a multivariate process then the uh, uh, you know uh, ratio between exponent sum square to total sum square cannot be represented as a simple correlation coefficient that is something different. What is this difference? The difference is the actually this particular r square component is represented as a coefficient of determination. Okay. So, this particular component this r square component is represented as a coefficient of coefficient of determination. <coughs> this particular item is represented as a coefficient of determination. So, what is this coefficient of determination? A coefficient of determination that means you see here uh, we had a uh, uh, we have here y square is equal to uh, summation y square equal to summation y hat square plus summation e squares. So, that is what uh, uh, we have received 1 equal to summation y hat square by summation e y square plus summation e square by summation summation y square. Okay. This is what we have received and by the process this is otherwise known as uh, e s s by t s s and this is what we have r s s by t s s. Okay. So, now this particular component by the you know by the process of derivations what we have received it is nothing but simply a, you can say r squares. E usually when we will represent the coefficient of determination then it is nothing but represented as a capital R square. So, we, uh, what we have written earlier it is called as a small r square. So, that means small r square and capital R square both are same in the case of in the case of bivariate model. So, bivariate model in the um, that means in the case of bivariate model the coefficient determination and the square of correlation coefficient are similar. So, that means they are same, but the interpretation is somewhat different in the correlation coefficient what we have to study is the you know association between the two variables degree of association between two variables. So, now here r square capital R square we have judged through the ratio between explained sum square by total sum square and explained sum square is nothing but total sum of the x component okay, that is explained items and divided by total sum of y component okay, which is nothing but dependent component. So, now we like to know what is the percentage influence of uh, independent variable to dependent variable or uh, you know explanatory variable to explained variable that is what we are now in the process. 
So, that means, r square is the ratio between expert sum square to total sum square by default it is equal to 1 here plus R s s by T s s here okay, R s s by T s s here. So, now there are you know beautiful interpretation here. So, what is this beautiful interpretation uh, of, uh, of you know uh, and uh, you know fortunately this particular item can be again turned into this one. So, now uh, uh, we know uh, correlation coefficient is usually in between minus 1 less than equal to 1. Okay. So, this is how the correlation coefficient range. Okay. This is correlation correlation coefficient range. Okay. Co this is correlation coefficient range. All right. So, now like correlation coefficient range r square r, r square is always in between 0 to 1. Okay. So, this is the range of coefficient of determination. So, what is the coefficient of determination? It is the ratio between explained sum square to total sum square. Physic, I mean, uh, technically, or you can say, if you go by physical interpretation, uh, it is the variation of you know uh, total variation of explained items to you can say total variation on y. So this is how it's called as a uh, 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 r square or, uh, uh, or coefficient of determination. So coefficient determination, coefficient of determination is nothing but uh, percentage or proportion variation of y which is explained by the uh, you know proportion variation of x okay this particular term is called as a proportion vari variance uh, proportion variation of y which is explained by proportion variation of x and this particular component is represented as a proportion variation of y which is explained by proportion variation of y that means this is total sum square is nothing but y square so W this is our total component. So, we like to know what is the x influence on y and what is e influence on y. So, that is why it is known as a proportion variation of y. This is proportion variation of y which is explained by this you know proportion variation of x because E s s is de uh, you know uh, the entire component of E s s depends upon the x component only. Then uh, this is nothing but uh, proportion variation of y which is x uh, uh, means which is not explained properly that is what we call as a RSS that means that will taken care by u component. So, 1 equal to r square by uh, r square plus r s s by t s s. Now, so we have the range 0 r square and 1. So, this will give you the model signal this will give the reliability of the model signal so far as the second objective is concerned. So, now you see we start with the first objective and by default we are now going to explain this second objective. So, that is the overall fitness of the model. So, now the moment we will get r square there is the proper structure how you have to uh, you know uh, receive this r square and how you have to go for its statistical level of significance because so far a first objective is concerned with respect to alpha head and beta head. So, we are applying the t statistics. So, now when we are going for you know overall fitness of the models then we have to use the f statistics. So, now we are just explaining how we are receiving the error variance and how it has connected to total variance uh, of y and total variance of x. So, now by this process we like to now explain how is the structure of this significance of the individual parameters that to alpha head and beta head and in the other side by uh, means by using all these you know TSS, ESS and RSS we like to explain how the overall fitness of the model will be statistically significant. So, that means we have two clear cut objectives in our mind first is the significance of the parameter and the significance of the overall fitness of the model. So, before I uh, means uh, before I highlight the entire structure of the R square significance level and the typical parameter significance level. So, we like to highlight here the influence of R squares because the value of r square always in between 0 to 1. So, if it is 0 how is the structure and if it is 1 how is the structure. So, let us see here. So, now r square uh, so the entire component is r square uh, r square plus summation e square by summation y square is exactly equal to 1. Okay. So, now uh, this is how we have observed. So, now uh, since this is our uh, target. So, what we will do? We will take r square equal to 1 minus summation e square by summation y square. So, okay, this is uh, this is what we have received from this you know uh, simplification. 
So, what we have to do here? So, now let us say if case 1, case 1, if r square is equal to 1, then what will happen? So, if r square equal to 1, this particular item is equal to 0, this particular item exactly equal to 0. So, r square equal to 1 means this is equal to 1 and this particular uh, uh, item is equal to 0. So, that means the model is absolutely fit for this you can say problem. So, the, the uh, when r square is 1 then it is the best best fitted models. Okay. So, now when r square exactly equal to 1 then the unexplained component the percentage of unemployment un unexplained component is exactly equal to 0. That means, there is no way u has a impact on you can say y variable. So, that means, the 100 percent influence of x on y. So, this is how the uh, this is the case when r square exactly equal to 1, but uh, in real life situation or real life problem it is very very difficult to, to get a situation when r square exactly equal to 1. All right. So, in the other side when r square equal to 1 then it is called as a complete fitted or perfectly fit models. This is what we will call as a perfectly fitted models, perfectly fitted models, but this is not the sufficient conditions, this is the necessary conditions. The when r square equal to 1, the overall fitness of the model is very high or uh, very high means it is a excellent one. So, that means it is completely fitted models, estimated model. So, it can be used for forecasting and policy use. But the sufficient condition is that when r square is exactly equal to 1, then corresponding to the first objective with respect to significance of the alpha head and beta head, it, uh, it has to be significant, highly significant, uh, then the model we can say that it is a best fitted model. Otherwise, if r square is exactly 1 and model is you know the significance of the model is absolutely high, and the other side if the parameters uh, are not statistical significant or few parameters are statistical significant and other parameters are not statistical significant, even significant at a very lower level, then the model cannot be used as a forecasting, even if r square equal to 1, because we are just in the beginning of this process. When we have r square equal to 1 and parameters are not, all parameters are not statistically highly significant, then there is a serious problem in the uh, modeling. So, there will be some you know uh, you know complex problem in between. So, that complex problems we have not highlighted we will uh, we will highlight details when we will proceed you know when we will proceed uh, accordingly. So, we uh, we like to know a later stage not now. So, what we can <coughs> now you can explain that when r square equal to 1 just we uh, interpret that it is perfectly fitted the models keeping other things remain constant. Okay. So, now case 2 case 2 when r square is equal to 0, r square equal to 0, then the model is completely unfit, the model is completely unfit, the model is completely unfit. That means, the entire uh, variations will receive from u only. So, that means, this particular item is equal to 1 and this is equal to 0. So, now when r square equal to r square equal to 1, so, that means, this is equal to 0. When r square equal to 1, then summation y square is equal to summation y head square. Okay. This is summation y square equal to summation y head square. When it is unfit, then summation y square is equal to summation e square. All right. But, this is rare and this is rare. So, uh, why it is rare? Uh, it, it may it may not be rare, but this is uh, you know very uh, extreme situation. Uh, uh, the pro, uh, reality is that, when we will when we are in the process of you know fitting a model, then obviously we must have some theoretical knowledge. So when we have a theoretical knowledge, then obviously we means most of the instances R square cannot be equal to zero. It may be very very low levels, but it cannot be zero. If your R square value is coming zero, that means your theory is not absolutely okay. That means your identification of problem with relate to all variables are not uh, systematically okay. So there is uh, some kind of problem. So that's why before going to uh, fit these particular models, your theoretical knowledge must be very very perfect, and you must be in a position to identify exactly the structure of variables. If your initial you know initial homework is very very tough, then obviously later stage of modeling will not face problems. Otherwise 
it is just like a continuous process until you get the best fitted model. If you do not go stepwise process, then obviously, every time we will, we will go back to again original position till you get the better fitted model. So, that is why each and every stage should be, be perfectly ok before you going to next stage. So, in reality uh, we have r square one, uh, one extreme equal to 1 and another extreme r square equal to 0, but it is very exceptional and it is also very exceptional. So, what is the actual? Actually, is the when r square value is close to 1, then it is called as a best you know means uh, better fitted models. We cannot say best fitted model, when we will call it a best fitted model, then obviously, r square equal to 1. So, now when r square uh, r square is close to 1, then it is called as a th that means, the fitness of the model will start increasing. That means, you start from r square equal to 0 0.0, zero, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05 like this. So, you will go up to 0 0.09. So, now, so we have three different ranges in fact, you see here. So, the range is like this. So, take a case here. So, this is what we will call 0, then 0 0.1, 0 0.1, then 0 0.2, then 0 0.3 like this, then this is 0 0.5 then of course, this is 1.0, this is how the r square ranges, this is the r square range. So, when we will call it r square 0 less than 1, so the range will be like this. So, this is you know middle. Okay. So, now uh, if uh, you are in this stage, the model fitness or model accuracy will be start declining. When we are moving this side, then the model accuracy will be start increasing. So, now always our objective is to go this side, not this side. So, that the model fitness or you know overall fitness of the model will start increasing. So, now when your r square value will be close towards 1, then it is the signal of or it is just like a green signal, it is the outcome of the best fitted model. So, when we are closing to 0 or close to 0, so then obviously, it is it will give you the red signal that means, we are uh, we are diverting from the best fitted model. So, we should not go towards the red signal, rather you have to go towards the green signal, where the best fitted model or the model accuracy will be start increasing. So, this should be our main agenda before we really go to this process. So, now, so now you come back to the original position, what is this actually structure? So, our objective is here to test the r square, uh, whether r square is statistically significant or not. So, for that we have to prepare the ANOVA tables. Okay. So, we have to prepare the ANOVA table, just like in the first objective, in the first objective we have explained here, if uh, the first objective what we have explained here, yes, this is what the first objective we have explained here, the first objective here the fitness of the model is like this. So, uh, we like to know uh, the target component is a T alpha head and the target component is a T beta head. Okay. So, now we, we have received here summation e square by n minus 2. So, that is what sigma square u. So, now variance of alpha head you have. So, similarly we have to go for standard error of alpha head. Standard error of alpha head is nothing but variance of alpha head. Okay. So, now similarly what we have to do here. So, now we have to get the variance of beta head here, variance of beta head is nothing but some sigma square u by summation x square. Okay. So, similarly standard error of beta head, standard error of beta head is nothing but square root of variance of beta head. Okay. So, this is what the beta head parameter structures and alpha head, alpha head parameter structure is, alpha head parameter structure is, you can say that means, uh, uh, be, uh, standard error of alpha head is nothing but uh, sigma square u summation x square uh, by n summation x squares. Okay. So, this is what the structure, this is standard error of this uh, items. All right. So, now okay, uh, standard error of uh, uh, this much. So, what you have to do? So, once you have alpha uh, variance of alpha head, you can get the standard error of uh, alpha head. So, what is the issue here? So, now our objective is to know whether alpha head is significant or beta head is alpha head is significant or beta head is significant. So, we need to calculate T of alpha head and you need to calculate T of beta heads. Okay. So, for that uh, 
uh, to know the significance of this particular alpha head and beta head. So, we have to apply a statistic, statistical hypothesis or we have to use the statistical hypothesis. Basically, the statistical hypothesis is divided into two parts called as a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So, this is null hypothesis, then in contemporary to null hypothesis, we have alternative hypothesis. So, we start with the null hypothesis that the uh, suppose our target is to test alpha is significant. We, uh, alpha is significant means alpha must have some value. Okay. If alpha has uh, some value, then we on the basis of that value we have to test the significance. So, now let us we start with that alpha is equal to 0. Okay. So, alpha uh, uh, is 0 usually fit that alpha equal to 0. Let us say alpha alpha equal to 0 and we have to test alpha not equal to 0. So, once you you know reject this null hypothesis then we are in the right track. If you could not reject then that variable may not be statistically significant. So, that means, so T of alpha head is basically we will calculate technically is nothing but alpha head by standard error of alpha head and T of beta head is nothing but you can say beta head by standard error of beta head. Okay. So, now this is calculated statistic, this is calculated statistic that has to be compared with tabulated statistic. Okay. So, this has to be also compared with tabulated statistic. Then we get to know whether this particular item is statistically significant or not uh, and if it is significant at what level they are significant. So, we, we have different uh, structure of significance level that we uh, in fact, we have discussed in the last class. So, there are three levels uh, uh, 1 percent uh, uh, 1 tail and 2 tail. 5 percent 1 tail 2 tail and 10 percent 1 tail 2 tail. So, the starting procedure is we have to start with the 1 percent level, then if it is not significant then you have to move to 5 percent, if it is not significant 5 percent then you have to go to 10 percent. But if you will get significance at 1 percent then that means your model accuracy is very very high and the reliability of the model is also that means uh, the reliability of the model is perfectly ok. okay. If we are getting significance at the 10 percent level. Yes, model uh, is reliable one, but the degree of reliability may be a, a very less. So, when uh, when the variable is statistically significant uh, you know close to 1 or at the level of 1 percent and obviously, the model reliability or model accuracy is very very high or absolutely ok. So, now we 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 will target or we have to reformulate or we have to design or redesign in such a way so that the parameters uh, in uh, uh, means involved in this particular systems modeling systems should be highly significant highly statistically significant and mostly it, sh it should be at the level of 1 percent only if it is so then the model reliability for so far as a first order condition is is ok. Now, again uh, for sufficient condition we have to go for R square part that means, there are two problems here. So, your all parameters should be statistical significant at the higher level uh, more means preferably at 1 percent level and at uh, same times your R square will be also statistically significant at the 1 percent level okay? uh, that is at a higher level. If it is so then the model is absolutely fit for the forecasting, but the problem is if parameters are significant and R square is not significant or R square is significant parameters are not significant then the problem is very complicated. So, that means there is some kind of fault or problem in between this process. So, that process has uh, means has to be investigated further again there are certain problems in between so that we are getting first part and we are not receiving the second part. The system so, uh, the system will be very much ok or perfectly ok when parameters are significant, it should be R square should be statistical significant. If not, uh, then there is a serious issue for this particular estimated model. We have to redesign or you have to rebuild till you get the best fitted models where both parameters are statistical significant and your R square will be statistical significant. So, we will discuss details in the next class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.